Hey everybody, Seth V here for the Knife Center, and it's New Knives Day! We're here to take a look at some of the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves. Let's get to it. Kicking things off this week with a couple of sweet new Knife Center exclusives from Kaiser. Starting with the Cormorant. This is equipped with CPM 4V steel and black linen micarta handles. This thing is pretty sweet and it comes in at $119. A pretty awesome deal if I do say so myself for that excellent CPM 4V steel and this really cool button lock system that they have going on in this knife. Um, it's really optimized for, well, for every deployment. We've got a thumb hole here. You can finger flick it. You've got a flipper. You've got a front flipper. Uh, it's, it's everything. And the button lock works every time. It falls shut without having to get your hands in the path of that blade. It's just really sweet if you like to fidget with your knives. I really can't think of anything more fidget friendly than this. And it's a pretty nice utilitarian design too. It's with about three and a quarter inches of blade, a uh, relatively straightforward handle. I mean, yes, you've got some sort of knocks out for the uh, thumb hole and such, but it's not to the point where I don't feel like I have a pretty good grip and some sort of flexibility to move around here. Um, pinch grip works. It's a great EDC size and I mean, you're going to be one of taking this out of your pocket <laughs> just to play with it. So I want to talk a little bit more about CPM 4V, but I'm going to take the opportunity to talk about it on this second Knife Center exclusive from Kaiser. This is the Swayback, also with a button lock, also with a flipper, also with black linen micarta scales, and this one comes in at just $74.95. Pretty sweet price point for, uh, well, for everything. Um, the button lock system is actually different than the one on the Cormorant. Um, the stop pin and the whole mechanics of the thing are sort of enclosed on the Cormorant, whereas here on the Swayback, they're all pretty visible. The button even has a bit of a different look to it. It operates mostly the same. It has maybe a little different feel. I don't even quite know how to describe it, but back to back they do feel a little bit different but they still have that fluid snappy action yeah really really sweet and 4v steel you may imagine it's similar to 3v steel and and it is it's a touch less tough but has a little bit higher strength and edge retention so it can get a little bit harder than 3v does and its edge should last a little longer and I think for a folding knife, that's a really excellent compromise. You're still gonna have um, that toughness at the edge that's gonna let you have a really nice thin edge, keep that edge, um, edge stability, some would call it. But, you know, you don't need the extreme toughness of 3V on a folding design like this. So we think it's a pretty sweet steel for knives like these. And for about 75 bucks, this is a heck of an EDC package too. So 4V is technically, well, not even technically, 4V is not a stainless steel. Uh, so it will patina if you let it, uh, but we've asked Kaiser to put a nice stone wash on these blades, which should help guard against the worst of the corrosion. And um, just wanna let you know so that you're aware of it and you can uh, manage that as you see fit. Let it take a patina or don't, it's up to you. It's still gonna function great. The lines of this knife definitely follow the traditional sway back pattern with the uh, kind of upturned rear of the knife here and the true Warncliffe blade shape, perfectly straight edge. I wouldn't recommend a Warncliffe blade if it's your only EDC knife, but if you don't have a Warncliffe blade in your collection, it's really worth checking out. Um, I really like the way they cut, the way they control in cuts. You kind of have the same leverage and the same angle of attack, whether you're cutting up here or back here. So as you're pushing through things, you just, you just feel in control. It's not really slipping anywhere. It's a very, very cool blade shape. And uh, here on this sway back, I think it's gonna make an excellent EDC. Next up, we've got the Orca 
Balasong Trainer from JK Designs. This Balasong Trainer is pretty unique. I've never seen one built quite like this. Um, we've got a full titanium blade here with these pretty sweet cutouts for uh, balance and channel milled integral G10 handles. So because of the titanium and the lack of any steel in these handles, you get a, a rather lightweight package, just 3.17 ounces overall. So this is a crazy light blade, but it's still perfectly balanced because the handles are light and the blade is light. So you don't have that bias towards the handle or bias towards the blade. Now these come in at $575. They're made by just one guy uh, in America, which helps explain part of the cost. And, the rest of it, I think, comes from the just unreal precision of these. Um, looking closer at little details like the way that the orca is milled here at the end of the handle, it's just laser crisp. And it all translates to a feeling in the hand of, I'll call it confidence. Um, so despite my best efforts, I'm not really a balisong flipper. Uh, I've had a few over the years, I've carried some for a while, but it just wasn't a style of knife that really stuck with me. And so the way that I um, judge balisongs, I guess I would say, is kind of by the feeling of confidence that they give you. Like a, a really, really good balisong just makes you want to try new tricks. It gives you the feeling that you can pull off new tricks. And that's the feeling that I get with this. And uh, if that sounds like something you'd like, we've got these in uh, black with green, a number of different blade colors, all anodized quite brilliantly, and uh, jade G10 scales as well. Check them out. All right, next up we have some uh, refreshingly affordable knives here from Cold Steel, starting with an all new knife, the Verdict. The Verdict is in. The Verdict is in and it is $52.95. And if you kind of recognize the lines of this knife from another cold steel, you would not be wrong. This is inspired by the Code 4 series. We've got the same kind of finger scallops here, the same simple handle shape. Um, it's different to some degree, mostly in its size. Uh, the blade length here is just three inches. And you may have already noticed, we also have ambidextrous deep carry pocket clip. Pretty sweet feature, not something you often see on Cold Steel's, and especially cool to see it paired with Cold Steel's excellent triad lock. Tried and true, it looks and works just like a back lock, but it's stronger, more stable over time. Excellent design. One thing I like to see with back lock designs like these is uh, when you go to close it, you can catch it there with your finger on the unsharpened Ricasso close it the rest of the way. Always nice to have that little extra bit of safety and ease of one-handed operation. And actually, this is really smooth. This is straight out of the box and I have no trouble flicking it open and closed. Pretty sweet for a back lock. Uh, materials on this, I don't think I've said. We've got 4116 stainless steel with a nice aggressive stonewash finish and molded grivery handles. Quite comfortable. You're really locked in place with those finger grooves, but the handle is uh, just about enough. Plenty for me with my average sized hands. I think it should fit most folks quite well. Yeah, just a, just a more EDC oriented cold steel, especially with that deep carry pocket clip. I think this is gonna make a lot of people happy. And uh, we also have it in black. This of course is the AD10 with the Tonto blade. Uh, another sweet cold steel, and honestly, the only cold steel I personally own. I, well, not this exact one, I have one of the original 8010s, and I have uh, really beat that knife up, and it's come through with flying colors. Excellent design, so comfortable, so comfortable. Um, I know it works well for David and is larger than, slightly larger than average hands. Slightly. It works for me with my average hands, and uh, you'd have to be a real giant for there not to be enough handle here for you. I mean, plenty to hold on to. And just the contouring, 
the wide flat clip, it all melts together into, into the kind of knife you're just gonna want to push harder. With this Tonto blade, it gives it a bit more of an aggressive character. Really, really thick tip, I'm gonna hold up to uh, piercing and twisting and all that. And then hollow ground through uh, this sort of flat section here for a little better um, slicing, cutting geometry. Because this is the 8010 Lite, we've got OS 10 steel and Grivery handles instead of the S35 and G10 of the original. Those compromises bring down the edge retention a little bit, but they also bring down the price point to $92.95. Um, really nice, approachable, affordable knife and something that's still built tough enough that this could last you a lifetime. Really sweet. Cool to see it in the Tonto. Uh, next up, you would not know it from looking at it here on the table, but these two knives you're about to see are cold steel knives. In fact, let me flip it around so we can get the branding on the blade there. Yes, this is a cold steel Stockman, a slip joint, about as traditionally built as I've seen a cold steel knife. Um, they've had some slip joints in the past, but this to me feels like a real throwback. Three-bladed Stockman, we've got the uh, spay here, the sheep's foot I opened, and of course the long clip. Nice, smooth yellow bone on this. Uh, price point, pretty good, $29.95. And the fit and finish here is also pretty good. Everything's smooth, flush, the springs are uh, surprisingly strong, I would say, very confidence-inspiring. Blade steel is 8CR 13MOV, which actually, depending on how you look at it, might be an upgrade from the usual kind of 420 series stuff uh, you typically find on uh, traditional slip joints like these. And yeah, just overall a, a surprisingly well-built, well-priced package for a true traditional slip joint from cold steel. So we've got uh, four in stock at the moment. This Stockman, uh, a Stockman with jig bone. We've got this Trapper here, quite a full-size knife. Um, also $29.95, but yeah, the proportions of this are maybe a little more cold steel. Just a big old slip joint Trapper. Two blades, clip and spay. Also uh, HCR steel. I pulled this trapper so we could check out the jigged bone texture on these slip joints. And uh, it's really nice. Very flush with the front and rear bolsters. Adds a bit of extra grip. Really nicely done on these cold steel slip joints. Not something I would expect to see from cold steel, but I have to say, they're excellent. If this full size trapper's a bit big for you, we also have a mini, it's about an inch shorter. Yeah, four new slip joint designs in all. Check them out on the website. Moving from traditional slip joints to modern slip joints, it's a new one from Serge Panchenko. This is the Wild Card. This slip joint, unlike the other two on the table, has a nice half stop and M390 steel here. So quite an upgrade in terms of stainlessness, edge retention, etc. Um, also a higher price point at $150. We've got Quite, a, quite an aggressive stone wash on both the blade and the titanium handles, and a pocket clip. So you can uh, carry this just like you would any other modern pocket knife, except you got that nail nick two-handed opening. Yeah, Serge always has fun with his designs. Uh, I really dig the Warncliffe blade shape here. I've already sung the praises of the Warncliffe, but just so controllable. Um, the precision of the tip is unreal. You know, if you you really need to go and, and almost like a little exacto knife, you know, you do some precision cutting there. I think a worn cliff blade shape makes a lot of sense on a slip joint because uh, as you're going to be using it to cut, all the force is going to be uh, keeping the blade open. Unlike something where you know there's some belly out here and you might be pushing forward to do a cut, possibly uh, using some force that might close it on your hand. A Warncliffe just does not have that risk and uh, gives you a little extra confidence uh, when you're using a slip joint knife like this. We got a nice stiff spring on this slip joint too, which is always good for safety. Definitely gonna pop itself open and keep itself 
closed with some non-trivial spring tension. If the blue stonewashed finish on these titanium handles is not to your liking, we also have it in uh, plain grade titanium for $10 less. Next up, we've got a new one from Eric Oaks. This is from his EDX uh, mid-tech line, and this knife is called the Solar Storm. A lot of cool details on this knife. I almost want to call it like a faux bolster look with the chevron milling here in the titanium, and then uh, inlays. They come in a bunch of different inlays, but this one I pulled caught my eye with copper camo fat carbon. Really cool stuff, almost looks like a tiger's eye stone to me. Nice, brilliant shine to it. 3.3 inch blade of M390 steel, hollow grind. So even though the blade is not all that wide, you still have a nice thin edge geometry for all your EDC slicing needs. And this blade shape is <laughs> really got me uh, at a loss as to what this even is. It got kind of a harpoon and then a clip and a belly. How about a modified harpoon? Reverse harpoon toe. Lamb's foot. We'll go with we'll go with something. Whatever you want to call it, I think it's quite utilitarian. Um, we don't have too much belly to really slip around on cuts and nice forward finger choil for at least a fingertip, although my fingers are skinny enough that I can pretty comfortably uh, and safely wrap my whole fist around here should I need to really choke up, put some pressure into a cut. And uh, that harpoon too, kind of accommodating for a thumb there. It's all making sense. Pocket clip on this is really nice too. Kind of continues the chevron lines of the uh, bolster look. Nice single piece of titanium milled backspacer. This one is $360 and some of the other inlaid versions are a little less, $340. Yeah, this is a beautiful EDC knife packed with details. Next up, from Christensen Knife Works. This is his production line the Maverick S. This thing is pretty sweet. This knife is a little more my style. I tend to prefer thumb studs. This one is really speaking to me on the table. Three inches of M390 steel, canvas micarta handles here, contoured for comfort, inset liner lock, and uh, all the accents around the pivot, the pocket clip, and the backspacer are all zirconium. Pretty sweet stuff. Zirconium, uh, you can usually recognize it by its very dark tone. Most metals don't naturally get this dark gray or even black sometimes, and zirconium uh, has no trouble going there. Really gives it a nice contrast look and a bit more of a, a bit of an extra weight too. Uh, reassuring, I wouldn't say this is a heavy knife by any means. In fact, it's kind of lightweight given its liner lock construction, but the uh, extra bits of zirconium definitely give it a nice weighty balance. The blade grind here is uh, what really stood out to me about this knife. We've got a really deep, really high hollow grind on the uh, main bevel and then a nice wide flat swedge here. So when you look at the kind of profile head on like this, you could see how thin behind the edge that blade is and then how it tapers again towards the spine. You get that really trapezoidal profile that's just gonna move almost aerodynamically through stuff. Uh, yeah, this knife is a cutter and a nice simple handle shape is gonna accommodate, you know, really powerful grips. However you need to hold this to uh, get your job done. It's gonna be comfy, it's gonna work great for you. And yeah, with those zirconium accents, this is a pretty sweet package. Next up, we've got a new X series knife from Enrique Pena. This is the mini diesel coming in at $299. The mini diesel is not a new design per se from Enrique, but I don't believe it's ever come with both a flipper and thumb studs before. And uh, yeah, it's very untraditional for him. Um, you know, it, his X-Series has kind of become known for those front flipper traditional knives. 
all excellent stuff, but if you're looking for something that is unapologetically modern, this is it. We've got a uh, compound grind here, recurve, M390 steel. Um, this thing is also gonna be a pretty aggressive cutter thanks to that blade shape. Uh, a real ripper, you know, with the recurve like that, I feel like they, they really shine in those long cuts where you're pulling through things and not being careful about exactly what you're doing. Um, since that recurve kind of gathers whatever it is you're cutting, it kind of helps you be a little less thoughtless and not have to be so you know, vigilant about your, about your cutting technique. Um, and thanks to that compound grind, uh, the flat grind at the tip leaves quite a bit of meat there should you need to you know, twist and, and tweak with that tip. Ball bearings in the pivot provide very fluid action. Easy to use with thumb stud, you can do the finger flick. Oh yeah. Nice milled titanium pocket clip there. Titanium backspacer, titanium liners. Or is it a frame? We do see kind of the bolster here. Yeah, just a real, uh, a real bulldog of a knife for sure. We have these now with a number of different handle configurations. This is the green micarta. We also have natural micarta, carbon fiber, um, and I think shred carbon fiber. So check them out on the website if you'd like to see all the variants in stock. Sweet modern design from Pena. We're gonna go beyond bulldog here with the Berg Blades production Iron Wolf. This thing is a beast. Uh, not only is it kind of huge for a folding knife, I mean, we've got all, just under four inches of blade, 3.9 uh, M390, oh, I'm sorry, 20 CV steel, and just a big old chunk of handle to hold on to. Yeah. This is the kind of knife that um, would be easy to use even wearing gloves. The blade shape on this one is pretty interesting too. Uh, it's not compound grind like a lot of Tantos are, but we do have kind of that secondary point there. Um, kind of cool to see. It's a bit of a compromise, I'd say, between your traditional Tanto and just a standard clip point or drop point. Um, you know, d depending on how you sharpen this, you could either keep that secondary point there sharp or kind of round it over and give yourself a little more belly. But it's gonna give you a little bit of that extra aggression there pulling through stuff with just that tip and uh, shouldn't present too much trouble sharpening either. We've got space here with that finger choil to choke up. Yeah, for some it may be a fingertip choil, but I'm feeling okay about uh, giving it a, a real gorilla grip here. One other detail I like is the, uh, I'm gonna call it a landing pad here for the flipper tab. So when your finger flies off the tab there, we've got these kind of milled grooves in either handle that catch your finger and give it a comfortable spot to land. Pretty nice to have if you're going to be like me flipping this open all day long. <laughs> These are individually serialized here. So this one is number 47 out of 80. Uh, we have a number of variants of these on the websites, um, all for $325. We've got uh, black coated blades with black titanium handles, um, different micarta scales. Um, you can really take your pick. They're all going to be pretty beastly. Next up is a fixed blade you've sort of seen before, the Gerber Terracraft. Though this one uh, takes a bit more of a tactical tact. All black, black G10, black coated S30V steel, made in the USA. The thing that really sticks out to me is the comfort on this handle. I really think from photos and even videos, you know, you see these facets and what look like maybe some hard edges on the handle, but in hand, it, it, it really does not come across that way. It feels quite natural, quite hand filling. I'm not getting hot spots from, from any of those facets. And I really like this in a pinch grip. The handle has a uh, quite a nice taper there that just naturally accommodates your uh, pinch grip here for all of your pinch grip cutting needs. The other difference between this and the version you saw last week is the sheath. This one has Kydex, or actually, Bolteron, technically. Um, got a nice little drop loop here, and uh, Gerber branding there. It's nicely done. 
I think in the package it even comes with a fire steel loop to attach, should that be something you want to do. A sweet new flagship fixed blade from Gerber. Awesome to see. The last knife on the table today is a new one from Henkels and Bob Kramer. This is his six inch chef knife. Uh, I believe the whole kind of Bob Kramer series from Henkels has been redesigned slightly with tweaked blade shapes and whatnot. Uh, this one is, is a new pattern for the line, and I kind of dig it. I really like these shorter, but still kind of traditional um, French style or European style uh, chef's knife profile. You know, it's still plenty broad to give you lots of safe knuckle clearance for doing those kind of uh, long chops against your knuckles. Um, but it's short enough that, you know, maybe if you're working in a cramped kitchen, little apartment, um, too many roommates, this is uh, uh, still going to be very agile and, and not feel you know, like the, the tip is out there kind of doing something uncontrollable. Yeah, just a really cool all-arounder, I think, unless you're constantly making huge cuts through uh, watermelons or rump roasts or whatever, six inches of blade is, is probably enough chef's knife for most jobs, and coming from Bob Kramer, you know that the design is going to be refined to an inch of its life. Uh, we've got a tapered tang here for that beautiful balance. We've got uh, brass bolsters, brass pins, the kind of Kramer signature pin there, and um, these handles are brown and black micarta. Yeah, a lot of handwork goes into this line of knives, um, which helps explain the price point. $289.99 on this, which actually is the cheapest chef's knife in the Bob Kramer line. Check out the crowned and polished spine on that. I mean, they, they really have gone the extra mile to deliver the kind of details you would find on a, on a Kramer knife from Bob Kramer, um, except one you can actually buy. <laughs> Next up on the table uh, is NAFs. We just started carrying a bunch of products from Ben Peterson's NAF line. This is his titanium ruler, truly built for the knife enthusiast. So not only can you measure your blade length, it's gonna be a, a softer material that's not gonna scratch your blade finish, and you can measure your edge angle with these uh, little angle finders at the end here. These are surprisingly thick, very sturdy. They're gonna stay straight uh, unless you bend them on purpose. And uh, they come in a bunch of different colors, all anodized, purple, green, etc. Uh, we also have cool little pocket straps that come with a compound for maintaining your edge on the go. Um, we've got posters, takedown mats, all sorts of cool kind of knife accessories from NAFs. And finally, a new Olight that is worth talking about because it now comes in your choice of three different color temperatures. Uh, I know for some flashlight aficionados that is a pretty big deal. This one is warm white, but we also have a neutral white and cool white. For those who don't know, the color temperature of an LED just kind of tells you how warm or cool it's going to be, how much yellow or blue there's going to be in the light. And, um, you know, when LEDs first hit the market, they were very blue. They uh, almost had like a, a sickly blue kind of hue to them. So it's nice to see now um, some nice warm kind of orangey, uh, almost candle light types of uh, tints from this. Gonna be great for feeling a little easier on the eyes maybe. Um, if you miss that kind of incandescent glow of the flashlights of your nice warm white Olight, we'll set you right. Uh, this is, I haven't even said the name yet. This is the Pebble. No, it's not. This is the i5T Plus. And Pebble is the name of this uh, milling here. Kind of a cool look to it. Pretty tactile too. You get some nice grip there. This is a two AA pen light and uh, can get, geez, 550 lumens max, which is pretty bright. One thing I always really like about Olights is this two-way pocket clip. So it kind of allows you to turn any hat with a brim into a headlamp because you can clip it on 
that way. That is a super underrated feature. Um, be able to have hands-free illumination without a headband. <laughs> it's pretty sweet. Well, that wraps up this week's look at all, well, not even all, at some of the new knives that hit our shelves this week. So if you want to get your hands on any of these knives, click the links in the description to head over to KnifeCenter.com. And don't forget about our knife rewards program so that if you buy any of these sweet knives, you can get some free money to spend on your next knife with us. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'm Seth B. That's Thomas behind the camera. We'll see you next time.